humans, I'm Mr. King. Metals. So first, what is the definition of alloy? Alloy it is a mixture of one or more different metals. And there are three popular examples of alloys that you need to know. Brass, bronze and stainless steel. Together with their composition, for example, brass it is made of copper and zinc. Bronze, copper and tin. Stainless steel, iron, chromium and nickel. In terms of particle arrangement, pure metals contain only one test of atoms of the same size. And they are all arranged in regular arrangement in the forms of layers. And as for alloys, the presence of atoms of different size disrupt the original arrangement and therefore they are no longer arranged regularly. Alright, the first FAQ. Why is pure metals memorable? This is because metal ions are arranged in a regular arrangement and therefore the layers of ions can slide past each other easily. Next, why is alloy widely used compared to pure metal? This is because alloy is a lot more stronger and harder. And the presence of foreign atoms of different size disrupt the regular arrangements of pure metal. Look, isn't it easy? Hehe. <laughs> Okay, next, rusting of iron. So in order for ions to undergo rusting, both oxygen and waters are needed. But iron can be prevented from rusting by protecting with a more reactive metal. And this is what we call sacrificial protection. If it is protected with zinc, it is what we call galvanizing. Alright, look here. Explain in terms of electron transfer why steel does not rust even if the layers of zinc is scratched so that the steel is exposed to air and water. 4 marks. So how to get 4 marks? So basically this question it has something to do with the reactivity series. So first you have to mention zinc is more reactive than iron. Therefore zinc loses electrons. Iron gains electrons and that's the reason why iron does not undergo oxidation and therefore there is no rusting. Okay, next, thermal decomposition. Basically, it means the breaking down of compound using heat. This is super, super important. You need to know the thermal decomposition of these three types of metal compounds, which are metal hydroxide, metal carbonate, and metal nitrate. And also, you need to know how to write the chemical equation for every single reaction here. First, metal hydroxide. So, bear in mind that all metal hydroxide can undergo thermal decomposition other than potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide. Okay, remember potassium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide, there are no reaction. Okay, metal hydroxide undergoes thermal decomposition to form metal oxide and water. See, example, calcium hydroxide, it will form calcium oxide and H2O. Okay, next, metal carbonate. Same, all metal carbonate can undergo the reaction other than potassium carbonate and sodium. See, metal carbonate undergoes thermal decomposition to form metal oxide and carbon dioxide. See, example, CaCO3, calcium carbonate, to form calcium oxide and CO2, carbon dioxide. For metal nitrate, it is a bit different because there are two types of reaction. Right, see, for potassium nitrate and sodium nitrate on it, they will form metal nitride and oxygen. See, example, potassium nitrate, it form potassium nitride, KNO2 and oxygen, then followed by balance the equation. Right, then same goes to sodium nitrate. Right, so other than potassium and sodium nitrate, okay, the rest, they will all form metal oxide, nitrogen dioxide gas and oxygen gas. See, example, okay, calcium nitrate, it form calcium oxide. Nitrogen dioxide gas and oxygen gas. Okay, then follow by balancing the equation. Okay, remember you have to make sure that the equation is balanced. Okay, and there's one important thing about this is remember you can remember nitrogen dioxide gas it is brown in color because in exam they might ask you for observation. Okay, remember NO2 it is brown in color. Alright, next, extractions of metals, see, aluminium, alright, so this is also an example of application of electrolysis. So the electrolyte needed is, okay, remember, it must be molten aluminium oxide, al 3 and it is also called bauxite. And bauxite is added with a chemical called cryolite, and the purpose of adding cryolite is to lower the melting point of bauxite and to increase the conductivity, right, important. 
Then how about the half equation? You see, this is molten electron. Remember, molten means there is no water molecule. Therefore, it contains only aluminum ions and oxide ions. So remember, you see, anode will always attract negative ions and cathode attract positive ions. Therefore, oxide ions will get discharged at anode and aluminum ions will get discharged at cathode. You see, followed by the half equation at both anode and cathode. Okay, FAQ. So why the carbon anode needs to be replaced periodically? Three marks. So how can you get three marks? So first you have to mention anode is made of carbon. Oxygen gas is produced at anode. And therefore carbon anode will react with oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so this is the reason why the carbon anode gets thinner very fast. And see the keywords are carbon, oxygen and carbon dioxide gas. See, isn't it easy? Sub sub soy la. Okay, iron. You see the iron ore it is iron trioxide, which is also called hematite. Okay, and hematite it is added with three raw materials in the furnace, okay, which are coal, limestone, which is CaCO3, and hot air. There are six important steps you have to remember. I see the first one. Hot air enters the furnace because the air provides the furnace with oxygen. Then the coal it burns in the air to produce heat. See, followed by the chemical equation C plus O2 to form CO2. Then the carbon dioxide produced it is reduced to carbon monoxide. See, C plus CO2 to form carbon monoxide. Okay, you have to make sure the equation is balanced. Okay, next, you see. The uh, coal burns in air to produce heat, therefore the temperature increases. See, therefore, the limestone undergoes thermal decomposition. See, CaCO3 to form CaO and CO2. Then, see, hematite undergoes reduction by carbon monoxide to produce molten iron. You see, the chemical equation Fe2O3 yeah, plus CO to form Fe and CO2. Okay, make sure that the equation is balanced. And you see in the furnace, okay, there is silica impurities. So the impurities is removed by calcium oxide. So this is the reason why limestone is added. See, the impurities, silicon dioxide, SiO2, is removed by calcium oxide to form CaSiO3, so-called calcium silicate. It is also called slag. The slag produced will always flows of molten iron. So this is how they will get separated. Okay, and there is one thing to take note, okay, the iron contains also impurities, which is carbon. So how to remove the carbons? Okay, it can be removed by blowing in oxygen gas, and then it will form carbon dioxide gas. So why are coal added into the furnace? Okay, remember, it is added to produce heat and also to act as reducing agent. There are also a few things to take note. See, the reaction between carbon and oxygen to form carbon dioxide it is an example of exothermic reaction. Okay, then the reaction between carbon and carbon dioxide is redox. Yeah, uh, then the next one, thermal decomposition. Okay, and the reaction between hematite and carbon monoxide is an example of redox reaction. Okay, then the next one it is an example of acid base reaction. Remember, you can silicon dioxide, non metal oxide, acidic, calcium oxide, metal oxide, which is basic. Alright, one last thing. You have to remember every single step here, okay, together with every single chemical equation as well. Super, super important. Okay, last one, zinc. See, zinc ore it is called zinc sulfide ZNS. It is also called zinc blend. Right, see the first step. Hot air enters the furnace. Yeah, then the coal it burns in the air producing heat. See, followed by the chemical equation C plus O2 to form CO2. Then the carbon dioxide is reduced to carbon monoxide. C plus CO2 to form 2CO. Then the zinc sulfide is roasted in the air to form zinc oxide. Okay, remember the keywords. Roasted in the air. See, ZNS plus O2 to form ZNO and SO2. Okay, balance equation. And then the zinc oxide is reduced by carbon monoxide or carbon to form zinc. Then, how zinc is obtained? Okay, zinc undergoes distillation, okay, which are vaporization and condensation. Okay, you have to remember these two. Alright, thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.